Today we're going to look at section 11.1 .1, and we're going to learn a couple different hypothesis tests that we can do for frequency distributions. So the name of the statistic that we use for frequency distribution testing is called the chi-square statistic. And when we're testing to see whether a frequency distribution fits a specific pattern, we use a test called the chi-square goodness of fit test. So basically what we're going to be doing is testing whether an observed frequency distribution fits some given expected frequency distribution. So there's going to be two types of frequencies in every problem, observed and expected. The observed frequency is the one that comes from a sample, and the expected frequency is the one that comes from a calculation that we'll have to do. Now there are two different ways that we'll calculate the expected frequencies. If we don't have any data regarding the like breakdown of percentages for that for those categories, then we're just going to let all of the frequencies be equal to each other. So for that calculation, we're just going to take the total amount of observations and divide them up evenly between all of the categories. So our expected frequency E will just be equal to N over K. So it's a very simple calculation. And then if we um, do have information about how the categories break down percentage-wise, then we're not going to let all of the expected ones be equal because we're going to use the information that we have um, about the percentages of the categories. So the calculation for that is going to be that E will equal N times P. So N is still the total number of observations, and then P is going to be the probability for each category. So we'll do that calculation for each category within the problem. Now for a chi-square goodness of fit test, the null hypothesis will always be a statement that indicates that there is no difference, or no change, or no preference. So it just depends on how the wording of the question is. You could see either one of um, those three. But no matter what, we're always going to state that there is none of either one of those. And then the alternative hypothesis is just going to say the opposite. So it'll say something about how there is, you know, a difference or a change or a preference, you know, um, between the categories or just some sort of difference between the observations. And then chi-square is always a right-tailed test. Now the formula to get chi-square is capital sigma, so it's the sum of, and then you basically do the observed frequency minus the expected frequency, square that amount, and then divide by the expected frequency. So you'll do that for each one of your categories, then sum them all up, and that'll give you your chi-square. Now, we're going to basically put our frequencies um, into lists in our calculator, and then we're going to tell our calculator how to do that formula. So I'll show you how to do that when we do an example. And then um, degrees of freedom, you do have to know that for this. So degrees of freedom for a goodness of fit test is, is that it's the number of categories minus one. So example one says that a market analyst wishes to see whether consumers have any preference among five flavors of a new fruit soda. A sample of 100 people provided the following data, and we're going to try to answer the question, is there enough evidence to reject the claim that there is no preference in the selection of fruit soda flavors? And our level of confidence will be 0.05. Okay, so we can see the breakdown of the um, answers that the 100 people gave as far as their uh, preference among those five flavors of fruit soda. Okay, so we'll start out with step one, and we're going to do the p-value method for this entire section. So we're going to start by stating our null hypothesis. So no matter what, we're just going to state that there is no, and then it's just the wording in the question. So since we're talking about preferences here, I'm going to make the statement that there is no preference in fruit soda flavors. And then the alternative, I'll just say that there is a preference in the fruit soda flavors. And then you just want to look at your specific question to see which one is going to be the claim. So it says up there that the claim is that there is no preference, so the null hypothesis will be your claim on that one. 
So this is one of the situations where the claim can be either one. It just depends on the wording of the question. But no matter what, the null always says that there is no preference, and the alternative always says that there is a preference. OK, so step two, uh, now we have to figure out which calculation to do. So if you look at the question and the information that they gave us, they did not give us any sort of um, like breakdown of the percentages for how they thought that people would respond as far as picking one of those fruit, uh, fruit soda flavors. So because of that, we're just going to assume or we're basically just going to let them all be equal to each other. So we're going to take the total amount of people, which was 100, and divide that up by the total categories, which there are five. So 100 divided by 5 is 20. And then I'm just going to add on to my table. So if you want to just um, draw in a row for yourself there. So we're going to let that top row, the one they gave us, be the um, observed frequencies. And then we'll fill in the second row with the expected frequencies. So I'm basically stating that each one of those is going to be 20. So we're just assuming that they're all equal. So in other words, there's no preference among the five. So we'll just divvy those up. OK, so I'm going to label those. First row is observed. Second row is expected. And then we're going to have to do that formula that's in your notes there. So to do that, we're going to put these into L1 and L2 in our calculator. Okay, and it's important that you always put your observed frequencies in L1 and your expected frequencies in L2. So if you want to take a second right now, go ahead and do that in your calculator. And then once you have that, our next step is going to be to find chi-square. And then we're going to use that to get our p-value. So to get chi-square, I'm going to show you where to go in your calculator. I'll put it up in words first, and then I'll show you on the screen. OK, so just make sure that you have the observed frequencies in L1 and the expected frequencies in L2. Then you're going to go back to your home screen, so do second mode. Then you'll do second stat, go over to math, and go down to sum. That's basically like the capital sigma. Okay, it's going to open up a parentheses for you. You want to open up another one. And then you're going to type second one minus second two, close the parentheses, square it, and then divide by second two and then close your overall parentheses. Okay, so we're typing in that formula, the O minus E squared um, over E. So we're just doing it in terms of L1 and L2. So uh, if you have the 83s, you can look over here and kind of match what your screen should look like. Um, either way, you should be getting 18 out. Okay, so we figured out that chi-square is equal to 18. Now we're going to use that value to get our p-value. So our p-value is going to be found by doing a distribution called the chi-square CDF. Okay, remember your distributions are found under second bars. So go to second bars, and then you're going to find uh, chi-square CDF. I believe it's the eighth one down. Okay, and then chi-square CDF is going to want three different inputs. The first one, the lower bound, is going to be that chi-square statistic that we just found. So you'll put 18 there. Your upper bound, since this is a right-tailed test, is always going to be E99. So you'll do the second comma Remember, that gives you your E, and then 9, 9, so that's our positive infinity. And then the third input is the degrees of freedom. So for the goodness of fit test, it's always the number of categories minus 1. So there were five categories of fruit soda, 
So we'll minus 1 and that will give us 4. And then you'll calculate that. And we'll get a p-value of about 0 0.0012. Okay, so on the newer calculators, you'll just put those values into your lower bound, your upper bound, and degrees of freedom. If you have the older style, you know, it's going to come up with chi-square CDF on the screen. And then you're just going to have to type all of those in yourself. Okay, so it's always ha it always has to go in the same order. So you're going to put the 18, the comma, the E99, the comma, and then the 4, close it. And either way, you should get 0 .0012 as your p-value. From there, we know that once you have your p-value, step 3, we just want to compare that with alpha. So since 0 0.0012 is less than or equal to 0 0.05, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. And then we're going to use one of those, you know, main four conclusion statements. So you just look at where your claim was and what your decision is. So for this one, we'll state that there is enough evidence to reject the claim that consumers show no preference for the flavors.